thanks to the first couple of folks joining here. Uh, we'll get started in a couple minutes just to give folks a chance to join us uh, and we'll get going soon. Thanks for, uh, thanks for joining us here today. Awesome. Looks like we've got some more folks joining in now. I uh, just said a minute ago, but uh, we will get started here a couple minutes past the hour just to give folks a chance to join. Uh, thanks for tuning in with us here today. We'll get started in a, in a few minutes. Looks like we have a few more folks joining now too. Uh, just one more time. Uh, welcome, and uh, we'll start here in just a couple minutes. We're gonna give probably another minute or so here to have some more folks join, and then we'll kick this one. Great. Well, it looks like we have a good handful of folks here on the call, so we are going to go ahead and get this started. Uh, first of all, thank you everyone for joining us today. I'm uh, really excited to be uh, chatting with you and for uh, the awesome conversation that we have teed up for you here. Um, today, what we'll be going through is our webinar on how B2B brands can get a competitive edge with visualized omnichannel selling, brought to you by Logic.io and 3Kit. Uh, like I said, really excited for the content that we have here for you today uh, and really excited about the partnership that Logic and 3Kit have kicked off here in this past month. So excited to tell you more about that in today's session. So a brief overview of today's agenda. I'm going to do a quick introduction to our speakers today. Uh, then we'll go through a few of our topics, starting with why uh, omni-channel selling for B2B. We'll then transition into why visual commerce in particular uh, is the next winning frontier for B2B businesses. We'll then talk a little bit about the common challenges of implementing visual commerce. And then we will, from there, transition into how 3Kit and Logic actually partner to deliver these game-changing visual commerce experiences. And then after we tell you about it, we'll show it to you as well. Uh, and we will do a quick demonstration of that. And we'll do a quick Q&A after that as well. So we'll leave time at the end. Um, just some housekeeping notes. We will have uh, a recording and slides available for everyone after this. So you will get that in your inbox within 24 hours after this webinar. Um, and as we go through the content here today, please feel free to go and ask questions in the chat. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and hold those until the very end and address those in the Q&A uh, after we get through the demonstration. Great. Well, to start out, I wanted to introduce today's speakers. Uh, first, we have Chris Schutz, CEO here at Logic.io. Uh, we are also joined by Matt Gorniak, CEO of 3Kit, and our Director of Sales Engineering here at Logic.io, Cameron McKell, who will be giving the demonstration portion of the, uh, of the uh, session here today. Um, really excited to have these folks on. Chris, uh, in particular, had 
uh, has a uh, long experience in the CPQ space in particular, working uh, in co-founding big machines, uh, selling that to Oracle uh, back in 2013, uh, and has a lot of expertise in this space. Matt Gorniak as well has a ton of expertise when it comes to working uh, at big machines, at Steelbrick, at Salesforce, and now leading the charge here at the Rekit in helping companies uh, see success with their visual commerce experience. And Cameron as well has a ton of experience uh, on the sales engineering side for CPQ working for Oracle as well. So ton of expertise here that we'll be able to share with you um, and great resources for, for everyone to uh, be presented with this content today. So without further ado, I will pass it to Chris to kick us off. Yeah, cool. Thanks, Blake. And uh, thank you everyone for joining this afternoon. And uh, we are really excited about this. So we've taken two very innovative companies, Logic.io and 3Kit, and built a, a combined app of the two technologies. And it's able to do things that, you know, when we started working in the CPQ space 20 years ago, things that frankly weren't possible. And, uh, and there, we're excited to cover it today because it'll not only um, help you get a competitive advantage, but it'll also help you increase um, the way you, you know, average order value, the way you sell your products. And it'll also support this, this kind of major shift that's happening in the B2B selling processes today. So to start off, a couple of things that we're observing, you know, Matt and I uh, work a lot in this industry and we're seeing some shifts happening in B2B buying behavior. You know, these transactions would typically be uh, set up through a CPQ tool. They'd often be assisted with a direct sales rep or a channel like a distributor of our reseller. And we're seeing that a lot of B2B buying, um, the customers have a propensity to want to go self-service. And this is a shift that, you know, you could certainly make the argument that the pandemic has helped drive some of this um, self-service uh, propensity to buying. But it's just a natural shift that's happening as an extension of what we've all have done in our B2C buying behaviors. And there's a lot of studies out there. We Blake actually pulled some interesting data from a Shopify study that um, customers actually are a growing percentage of them are, are preferring to do these transactions in a self-service mode, which is something that we should all be planning for to continue to support our businesses going forward. Um, the second thing is that this market is, is exploding. You know, if you look at the transaction volume for this, um, you know, it was seven, you know, seven and a third trillion in 2020. Um, and that is going to, you know, it's growing at about 20% per year, and that'll be, you know, nearly 20 trillion in just a handful of years. And so this is where all the transactions are eventually going to go in this self-service B2B mode. And then the, the last statistic, which we thought was really interesting, is that uh, B2B buyers are becoming more and more comfortable doing very large transactions online. So um, five to 10 years ago, we would do these, we would work on these systems and they would primarily be used for things like maybe spare parts or add-on services, like fairly low dollar transactions. And now we're seeing that uh, customers are very comfortable spending you know, 50,000, 100,000, even 500,000 on a transaction in a self-service mode, which is really important. And again, that's kind of just an extension of probably what you're doing in your own B2C buying behaviors. I'm sure many of you have bought a car online. I did that a couple of years ago. I think we're all getting comfortable with that. And that shift is obviously moving to B2B. Next slide, Blake, please. And, um, there's a couple of things, you know, not only is this something that um, you should do to kind of support the shift, but it's also something you can use to differentiate your business, which is an interesting way to kind of look at this, this transition. And that is that a lot of your buyers for your products want to do research on their own. So they would prefer to, to, to navigate through your website and your online selling systems and get information on your products, you know, at their own leisure, at their own time frame, do their own iterative research and, and really get the background on your products. The second thing is that you can leverage um, this B2B self-service mode with as a way to extend a channel that is perhaps um, something that's, dip, it's, a, it's a buying population that's difficult for you to get to today. And you can use this as a way to reach a, a bigger population of buyers that without having to do 
significant infrastructure spend, significant channel enablement. So it's an opportunity to um, to also take some cost out of your business while expanding your your revenue reach. And then the last piece of it is um, that the self service capabilities also allow you to effectively increase your win rates on deals. So we and when we were working on big machines a couple you know a decade ago, we did a lot of studies around um, how do you increase quote conversion. You know what are things that tend to enable you to convert a transaction or a quote better. And the biggest factor to that is speed. And that's, I, we think to, is probably the biggest driver for why a lot of these B2B transactions are going self-service is that speed is a primary way to get um, your product message, your pricing in the hands of your customer the fastest, and then therefore they'll be most likely to buy from you instead of your competitor. I'll hand it over to Matt for a minute and he'll um, give you some background on the visual commerce piece. Yeah, thank you. Um, I would say the, can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. I would say the big unlock is obviously, I mean, at the end, customers do want to see what they buy. I mean, that's in some ways we're stating the very obvious. It's just that technology couldn't deliver that. And so when you see, and that, by the way, the other trend is uh, consumerization. So obviously, B2B also consider themselves differently, just the product complexity and the kinds of products and the buyer. But turns out it's actually all becoming one of the same. So yes, if you can, you know, see a complex product, engage it, engage with it, experience it, you'll buy a lot more. You'll remember it. Um, you have the same experience as you would have in a consumer product. And thus you buy a lot more of it. And the other thing with the B2B product, obviously, is you're looking, you're, you're looking to solve a problem. You know, you're probably not on the weekend looking to get inspired to buy a forklift, you need a forklift, you know, and if you find the right one, then you're going to buy it really, really fast. And so it's not surprising to see stats like 70% of B2B businesses are going to experiment and the leaders are going to implement visual and with that unlock a tremendous advantage. So that's sort of the headline there. And that's, here's some of the examples of that across different verticals, right? On the left, you've got a power charger. And again, without visual, without the unlock, it's part numbers. But it, yes, it's a business product. Yes, you're going to buy this for, let's say, a, a store. It's going to buy chargers. And yes, technically, you can do that just by part numbers alone. But it's fairly complicated. By seeing it, being able to configure it, and also the attributes of the look and feel are important. Obviously, if they're not important at all, then visual doesn't matter. But in this case, I'm, I'm sort of like, I'm getting what we need. I can place in my environment um, and basically buy with confidence. In the middle, you see furniture is a great example. That's the ultimate. It's very complex, but also very personal. There, that visual is a total unlock to barrier to entry. And I think we like bring that up as a good example because everyone can relate to that. You know, it's that couch you almost bought, but you didn't because you just didn't know because it's a big enough purchase. Um, and the beauty in B2B is that it's about, you know, it's not even that emotional. It's just making sure it's the right fit. <laughs> and it, it's exactly what you're looking for. Another example is medical devices. So really, this is pretty broadly applicable to B2B. So I want to show you some examples that these are not consumer products, right, that we're talking about. And so if you look at the benefits, they're, they're quite tremendous. I mean, at the end of the day, I would say it's actually very obvious we're not bringing something to the customers and the buyers that they're like, oh my God, thank you for bringing something. That The how-to is the, the innovation. That's the big, the, the mousetrap. That's cracking the code, making that easy for you, the brand manufacturer to deploy. That's the one, but but the um, but the benefits of it are quite, they're quite evident. It's what they want. And so if you, if you think about B2B, the, the challenge there is that I think a lot of folks believe that their products are too complex for this. And I think that is a true statement 20 years ago. And also um, the buyers did not ask for it. 
but it's actually false. Like your products are not too complex. It's actually very much solvable if you do it with the right platform with the right approach. Um, and so that's kind of the big statement there. Like your products are not too complex. Um, and the other one is to consider is technical expertise. And I agree, like this is something like anything else in, in, the, um, in the world, you don't want to reinvent the wheel. You should buy a platform that does this out of the box. And therefore, you don't have to worry about your product complexity being in the way of that. Um, so that's kind of the second consideration. Um, so I'm kind of seeing that's usually why people don't do it, but it's very much solvable. And the other, the third one is, how do I generate a proper customer experience? So first, my, I don't think my product can handle this. B, I don't know how to do it. And three, how do I make sure it's easy to use and customers love it? But my proposal to you is the inverse. Customers want to buy your comp, the complex product easily and enjoy the experience and experience your product. They really don't care about your technical expertise, but they know when they see your product, they like it, they'll buy it. And by the way, the visual alone is a total unlock. It makes it so much easier. So from a customer experience, it's a huge win. So my, my suggestion to you is it's very much solvable today. It's a huge unlock. And I wouldn't wait too long to experiment with this because it's all very much solvable. And so from a from a perspective of how to do this, I kind of touched on this before. This, this, this reminds me very much of any new innovation that's kind of out at the beginning. And by the way, what we're talking about today, that's been done and custom coded for a while on. And that's what made it so challenging. And now today it's out of the box in headless fashion. So yeah, we would propose don't custom code it. That's where it gets really difficult. You're, you're most likely, your business is not 100% focused on solving these problems. That's not what your strength is. That's where we come in. So for sure, don't do that. Um, that's like any other, anything else you'd buy, right? Why, why not buy a platform? Why custom code something you're not good at? But it's important to solve it. Solve for speed. And that kind of comes to, again, and performance that comes with working with platforms and companies that all they do is that, right? That's what Three kid things about logic is performance, optimizing the product to do exactly what it does every day, all day long. And we invest massive amounts of money for that. And for the flexibility, which is number three. So again, make sure your product's flexible. And I would suggest that when you make evaluations, look at the admin platform behind the scenes. Look at you know the, the, the visual upfront and speed, that's very important. And, and for sure go for that and make sure it looks beautiful to your customers and achieves what you're looking for but also behind the scenes, get a sense for how it's being done. That's the big unlock now in the modern approach to solving these problems. And the fourth one, frankly, all these are very important. The fourth one could be number one as well. Um, you know, when you sell complex products in your sizable company, usually it's not done in, in a vacuum. It's super important to be able to integrate to other systems, whether e-commerce systems, backend systems, as we call out here, and solutions like Three Kit and Logic are purpose built for integration. We've done software for a long time, Chris. We've done it since '99, and the big revolution on top of us in this field, revolutionizing the field, and being able to crack that code is also that our platforms are headless built for integration. And that, that's one thing I would not take for granted because if you don't build a company that way in the product, um, it becomes really complicated. So we're stoked that we can reinvent that as well here. Well, thanks, Matt. So we talked about the market need and then some of the challenges. So what I'd like to do is take you through how we address those challenges and then what the combined solution of um, Logic and 3Kit looks like for, for managing your product configuration and, and visual, visual capabilities. So on the complexity piece, uh, this is something that you know Matt and I have worked on for a long time in this industry. And it, it, this has traditionally been a challenge if you have products even moderately complex with, you know, let's say dozens of options and different pricing rules and constraints. And this, over the years, it's been a challenge for companies to find an easy way to present their products. And so that's been the big driver to have, you know, channel participation um, instead of going direct. And one of the things we did when we started um, Logic.io a year ago is we really focused on how do we make 
uh, complex product messages easy to present to the end users and also to maintain in your day-to-day -day, you know, engineering team or, or product definition teams. And this, that's truly been a breakthrough innovation that we've, we've done with the, uh, with the logic configurator. Um, the, um, the other thing we've done is we've productized the solution with logic and three kits. So there's no, there's no complicated APIs to enable. It's a truly a productized integration between the two solutions. So as you create your visual experience with three kit, you can easily represent that in the product configurator in logic IO. And then the third piece, which is also critical for this B2B self-service is that um, the, the application has to be a near instantaneous response time. So what you need to do to really drive this message home with complex products as you're visualizing is you need to give your customers almost like a video game-like experience as they're picking options and seeing the behavior um, of the product configuration, they're seeing the messages come back to them, they're seeing the visual update. And so our solution, we put a lot of engineering R&D dollars into making the solution, the combined solution very performant so that it's a very pleasant, easy buying experience uh, for your customers. And so we combine these two technologies, um, which is really interesting because you can get kind of the best of both of these um, benefits that you need to really drive the self-service um, for B2B transactions. So you, you, your customers get to see the impact of changing the configuration on the visualization. And they also get to experience all of the definition in your product. So they can see all of the different option relationships, the pricing relationships. They can dynamically hide and show options and components of the product as they're doing the, the uh, configuration real time. And then on the three kit side, this innovative technology is really interesting. So you might be wondering, so how do you generate these photorealistic images, visual configuration, or even augmented reality? And what three kit has done is they've taken it, they've created the ability to gather many different types of inputs to feed data into their visualization engine. And they've automated a lot of the visualization setup in that engine. So you can get product data from CAD files, um, even spreadsheets, um, pictures, diagrams, drawings. Um, and that feeds into the three kit engine to create this concept of a real time visual representation of the product that you can zoom in on, rotate. Um, you can also use it to generate um, realistic uh, virtual photographs. So you don't have to actually um, go through the expense of generating photographs of your products. And then the third piece, which is really interesting for certainly a lot of products and probably a growing need is the concept of augmented reality. So once you've configured the product, visualized it, like let's say um, a piece of material handling equipment, you could actually visualize it in your manufacturing shop and see how it works with the other pieces of equipment, which is a really interesting piece of it. And then you can take those visual experiences and then you can easily syndicate those into, um, a, let's say an e-commerce engine, a self-service engine, um, or syndicated throughout your organization if you need to communicate your visualized product message, you know, even to your employees internally, let's say. And then on the logic side, um, so the product definition, the rules, the configuration of this, we, uh, when we built this um, configurator a year ago, um, we really looked at the best of breed configurators out there studied their behavior. And we knew that we had to do something that was a quantum leap in performance um, with our configurator. And so the, lot, with the, lot, the way the logic configurator works is we've automated a lot of the complex administration tasks that you would normally have to do. So things like organizing the sequence that rules run in, um, worrying about redundant rules. Um, and we've also put together a point and click easy admin to allow you to create complex relationships of your rules without having to do extensive coding um, to set them up. And we put all of this in uh, a proprietary solving engine that our engineering team built. And that's the key to giving us this near instantaneous, you know, dozen millisecond uh, response time in the app, which is really important for these automated B2B buying experiences. And so the key thing of this combined solution, and, you know, we're excited to show you this here in a second, 
is in order to be successful with these self-service B2B buying transactions, you know, we, this combined solution does a couple things that are really critical for you to be successful. One is amazing performance, amazing real-time visualization of your products as you're configuring them. Low total cost of ownership because it's truly a, it's a, it's a pre-built software app instead of a custom build exercise. And then as your products continue to evolve and change day to day, you know, week to week, hour to hour, uh, the maintenance of the three kit combined three kit logic IO solution allow you to easily keep up with those product changes without having to, um, you know, send them to a special organization like IT to do that. You can easily manage the administration layer in, in these apps to give you this combined B2B selling experience. And now I think for the best part of the uh, webinar today, I'd like to turn it over to Cameron and she'll show you an example of a combined solution with Logic IO and 3 kit Thanks, Chris. Blake, if you wanna pass me control for screen sharing. There we go. All right. So today I'm gonna to be walking you through a demonstration that was put together for a mutual customer between 3Kit and Logic. So today I'll be going through and configuring a shed. So as Matt mentioned previously, these types of complex products that really your customers wanna have in their hands and be able to go through and purchase on their own. So to get started, I'll enter some of my customer information. And you'll see here one example of that Logic Rules engine running. Once I've submitted my zip code, I'm able to see my additional purchase options that are available for me specifically. So it's a very personalized experience. As I walk through, I can see all of my required areas that I need to fill out and being guided. And as I make updates within my configuration, immediately that solving engine in the back is notifying me of my updates, if anything is incompatible, any recommendations that would be popping up so that I, as a customer, am able to seamlessly move through. So let's start building our shed. Now coming in, you'll see here on the left-hand side, I can see all of my different walkthroughs that I need to go through in order to build out my shed. The user experience is very clean, easy to navigate. And as I start making updates here on the left, you'll see my visualization on the right, it's gonna update in real time. So I can add different paneling. I have the ability to zoom in. If I want a closer look, zoom out, et cetera. And as I start making these changes, again, I'm going to be able to capture all of this visually. So at every step of the way, I know exactly what I'm building exactly what I'm putting together. Now, if I take a look at my particular width and length that's available to me right now, at a width of 10, I've got a number of different options of length that I can choose, but the maximum length is 28. So as an example, again, of that rules engine firing in the background, once I update my width, instantaneously, my options for my length have updated and I can now go up to a maximum length of 52. So again, as the customer walking through this, it's very clear to me what I need to select. I have all of the information right in front of me. And as I make changes in my configuration, the system's automatically updating for me. Not just what's available uh, from an informational perspective, but also visually, I can see exactly what I need to do. And it can get very complex with what I'm able to include on my shed. So I can add in a porch if I choose, add in multiple sides of that. So again, I'm seeing every different angle 
what's relevant for me as I update things like my color, my style, I'm seeing that update immediately in real time. And I'm always able to capture and see what my total product looks like as I move through. So let's have a little fun with this. If I wanna add in on the front of my shed, a residential door, I'm now being prompted with all of the different options that are available so, to me. So again, that user experience, showing me what I need to fill out, what all needs to be completed, but only showing me the relevant information. I can now see my door has been added, even small things, like how do I want my door to open? Where do I want that handle to be? I'm always seeing this in real time and the system's instantaneously making these updates for me. I can take a look at different angles, see what this view is, and once I'm satisfied, I can continue moving through my build. Now, if I wanna add a different type of style door onto the back of my shed, I have the flexibility. And again, based off of what I currently have selected, such as a sing single door, I've got about six options that I can choose from. Once I make my updates, again, the system responds to me, moves quickly with me. So as I'm going through this, it feels natural as I'm building. I can add different decorations. So really the detail that's available is very in-depth. I'm able to add in trims, windows, et cetera. I even have the ability to move my door in real time and take a look and see, do I want this centered? Do I want it on the right, the left, et cetera? Once I've made my decision, I can lock it in. And if I want to take a look at all of my different angles, I can see from the front, the right side, the back, and of course the left side. So I'm always fully aware of what's going on, what's being added. But it's not just the main configuration that I can include. I can also add different upgrades, such as a cupola on the top of my shed. I can view that in real time. And then I can also add different interior options. And again, if there's a certain requirement for something that I'm adding, the system's automatically notifying me of that. So as a customer, I don't have to make any guesses as I'm walking through. I can see exactly what I'm building, exactly what I'm creating, how do I want that delivered, et cetera. So there's no limitations within this rules engine and the visualization to support your various customers' needs. And lastly, the most fun part, now I can add some different color and decoration. So I can choose what type of roof that I want. I can experiment with my colors of my particular shed. If I have a custom color that I need to match, maybe I wanna match this to the color of my house, et cetera. I've got the ability to do that. And once I've added in all of my different features, not only am I configuring a product here, but I'm also enjoying what I'm doing. It's very realistic, in real time, operating for me to let me know exactly what I need. And again, I can take a look and see what does this look like from every single angle. And I can take it a step further. I can check out my dimensions now that everything has been added. So again, all of the information that's relevant for me as a customer for my complex product, I can see in real time. So I can make that educated and informed decision. And the key here is think of your customers. Are they gonna wanna just go buy a shed based off of a single image that they really have no detail on? Or are they gonna want an experience like this where they can actually visually see and place that shed? And all the while, as I've been going through, all of my pricing information has been updating for me. I can see what my total amount is gonna be. And then again, that rules engine in the background, not necessarily just for configuration, but calculations, letting me know what is my total order gonna be and ultimately how much is going to be due for me. I have the ability to either print this or download it. And then of course, lastly, if I wanna save my quote, email it out to me, I've got the option to do that and download it and save it for later or I could walk through and go through a checkout process 
if required. So tons of flexibility available here. We just saw in real time how quickly I was able to build out an over 24 foot shed uh, in the blink of an eye. And it's the ability with Logic and 3Kit together to create that type of experience for your customers. And with that, I'm gonna hand it over back to Blake for some Q&A. Thank you, everyone. Awesome, thank you, Cam. That was a, that was a great demo. And I think that really brings, brings it all together based on everything that Matt and Chris uh, had went through today and, and gives you guys uh, a visual picture of what this partnership really means here. So I uh, wanna make sure that we're opening it up to Q&A here. So if you have questions, please enter them into the uh, Q&A or the chat. Uh, and we're happy to answer them. Uh, we do have a, a couple initial questions that we can run through here uh, for, for Matt and Chris. So uh, one question that we have is, you know, you mentioned the custom development and custom code that some companies have traditionally used for this. Um, how long does this type of solution, you know, Logic and 3Kit take to actually implement and integrate and, and get live compared to something like that? I can speak to the logic piece of it. The, the integration is is pre-built, so there so there isn't any wiring that the customer has to do. Um, the logic piece of it it obviously depends a lot on what you're configuring. Um, we've been doing some studies recently of customers that have been implementing configurators from you know other systems into logic in the last couple of weeks. In particular, we've seen this a few times. And what's interesting is. We've built um, this concept in the tool we call a matrix loader, which allows you to put a lot of complex data into the system very easily from a Google Sheet or Excel. And we've we've seen migrations for pretty sophisticated products, you know, happening in days. And that doesn't include obviously you want to test and make sure everything is working correctly. But um, I think the the era of you know multi month or multi calendar quarter configuration implementations are probably rapidly coming to an end. We're seeing things happening very quickly with some of the modern aspects of the administration and the Excel um, uploads that we put in. And Matt, I don't, you, you can speak to the visualization stuff probably. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's a really big question because it does depend on scope, probably for both. I mean, I'll speak to us probably similar for both. I mean, we've done them in weeks, but it could be also longer. And then and again, like, are you doing, for three kit, it's like are you doing one product, product line, multiple product lines? Scope probably has the biggest in impact on timing. Um, I know I'm being vague because it is sort of a vague, vague question. I mean, it's a good question, but um, and then the other part of it is, I would say, how ready the organization um, is for this. And and let me let me give you sort of two views on that. One is um, data or or visuals have not been performed or gathered. So this is the first time they're doing that and there's decisions to be made. And actually not that it's similar from a configurator project, like in a sense, here's the good news. Um, usually this is a forcing function for the company to do that. They wanna do this, but it impacts time. So it could be from weeks to months um, based on those two big ones, but it doesn't have to be long. I mean, we literally have done projects in two weeks. So um, I would say that's on the, on the very fast side, but. Another, another question we just got in. So once the code is built in Logic and 3Kit, can it be integrated with Salesforce CPQ and passed through Salesforce CPQ? Yeah, that, that's a great question. And that's a standard integration that we built into both these products. So um, Logic, we have an API function that's pre-built where you can um, enable these product models is what Salesforce CPQ calls an external configuration. It's literally the flip of a switch. And then when you exit the configuration se session, we build the, um, the quote line items in what Salesforce calls the quote line item editor in CPQ. It's a very easy, it's a very easy thing to enable. And that is an interesting point to bring up because I think a lot of these companies we're working with, the first step that they're doing for B2B self-service is they're actually taking these transactions, these configurations customers are doing, and they're actually pushing them into Salesforce or you know, CRM tool, and then using them as a lead follow-up mechanism for their sales team. So even if you can't get it all the way to have the customer transact, you can still use this as an amazing lead source for your for your channel and direct sales. 
Actually, same for us as well. It's we have standard integrations to uh, Salesforce CPQ. I think that was the question, right? CPQ as well, um, uh, and customers leveraging that. Yeah. There's actually another uh, question about just integrations in general. I think what you'll find is with with three kid. I think Blake, I'm taking one in there, which is like what major systems, and actually we've integrated to all of them. And there's out of the box integrations, but also the way we architected three kid and Chris, I don't want to speak for you. I know the answer is the essential for integration. Like it's just a different way of architecting the system. We know that because we've done it differently in the past. And, you know, 3Kit is built to integrate. So we know that every, anywhere we go, there's systems really in place that you value, your customers value, and they have a purpose. And so if there's no, if there's a, no need to replace them, don't, we'll, we'll integrate to them. So again, major systems, standard integrations, but if there's no integration, it's not a, it's quote unquote not a big deal. Uh, we would we would say. Great. And then last question is around: Can can the solution be integrated with other CPQ uh, systems, and you know further extend that functionality? Can this partnership be used to extend that functionality to self service B two B commerce as well? Yeah, I can. So we, to kind of build on um, the previous question and Matt's comments, so we built these tools. They're truly headless applications. So uh, one of the things we kind of learned the hard way with the previous generation CPQ apps that we worked on is that um, we built them and then we, uh, we tried to make them headless after the fact. And the problem with that is you're never, it's never quite as good as if you, if you design the app to be headless from the beginning. Um, of the process because the APIs that Cameron was just using today or just showing you a minute ago in her demo, the APIs that we use for our UI and the 3Kit UI um, are the same ones that you would use if you wanted to call the system um, in a headless fashion from an e-commerce tool or maybe from your order management system or from some other application that runs you know, in your business or maybe just your corporate website, for example. Um, that's the same set of APIs that we use to run the app when we embed logic inside Salesforce, for example, it's the same API set. And so because of that, it's really easy if you um, want to integrate this into basically any other application, like let's say you wanted to create a web service to call the configurator that Cameron just showed you and return the bill material, let's say, for example, well, that web service already exists because we use that as part of the core application architecture. And so you can do that. So it makes these, it's this concept of syndication and plugging this product capability into multiple areas in your systems. It makes it very easy to do that. Yeah, I mean, same for us as well. I mean, I, it's a very similar answer. I think what really excites Chris and I um, is that, you know, having thought about these problems for a very long time, being able to like crack the code, but also like Chris, you nailed it, right? Like headless and we know this because prior stuff we did was not and so it's not easy to re-architect and so it's nice to be able to go in with the fresh fresh approach with that in mind and it's a total unlock so gets us really excited awesome well it looks like that's all of our questions here um if anyone in the audience has additional questions feel free to uh email us at the uh, addresses you can see on the screen or reach out to us on either of our sites. We'd be happy to show you, show you more of the product and go through it. And Blake, um, I think if you're in Chicago, we have a reception tonight. You're welcome to join as well. I don't know who's in Chicago or who not, but. Yeah, great point. At 5.30 tonight, we do have a, uh, a reception going on. You can check out our social profiles where we're advertising that and you can sign up. Um, and we're really excited for that. Hopefully we'll see. We'll serve that. headless beers, right? Headless beers. <laughs> 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 Awesome. Well, thank you everyone here for joining. Thank you, Chris, Matt, and Cameron for presenting here today. I think you shared some great stuff with the audience here. And thanks everyone for joining. Like I said, we'll follow up with slides and the recording uh, within the next 24 hours. Thanks everyone. Thanks, thanks for joining. Thanks, thanks everyone.